Hurry up, people are looking at me, giving me the finger. The old lady just gave me the finger. This job is a young man's job. I'm not chasing an 18-year-old through the field with a can of beer, because I might drop my beer, but... but... I've always noticed that I could always push things to the limit and kind of do it my own way. So, what a nice freaking day out. I've been a police officer in this township for 36 years. I never really ever wanted to be a hero and be a police officer or fireman, but I had a wife and a family and uh, we needed a job. This is Cheesy Rider, our undercover policeman. If I had a face like that, I'd cover it up too. If you can't have fun and smile in this job, you better get out of it. Oh, look. Here comes happy Stevie Robert. This is for taking care of those couple parking tickets. Took care of for me. Oh, yeah, this. thank you. <laughs> they told me I have to expose myself in the community, and that's why I'm always here. Well, I just could tell them that you think there's a train there because you saw its tracks, didn't you? <laughs> when I say have fun, you be nice to people. You wave to people. Oh, here she comes with my my gift. Look at this, Aaron. You go to some other towns, the cop doesn't wave to you. They drive down the road and look, wave. Toot the horn. I'd say under your breath, you jackass, but you toot the horn, you wave to them. He's a great guy, he never swears, he's so tactful, he's such a class act. How about politically incorrect? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. When he was a student at school and I was a teacher in the school, he was called Motor Mouth. Motor Mouth. He has a way of dealing with people that's uh, really pretty unique. I say what people think. Shut your mouth, yeah. Probably pick their fucking yeah, nose with it. Be glad I didn't pass gas. If I were here from an asshole, I would have farted, Ray. <laughs> he is an asshole. He's a granola chewer is what he is. She's not bad. I'm going to take him to the other side of the tracks. <laughs> look at the shit. It's just shit. It's just, look at that trailer. I don't think anybody lives in it, but look at it. There's crazy cat lady's house to your right. Look at the Venetian blinds. There's the garbage truck. They cater to Italian weddings. This is like the Pleasant Valley Sunday type thing here a little bit. We're, we're, we're special. I expect to see Gaddafi come out the front door. If we could buy them for what they're worth, sell them for what they think they're worth, he'd make a substantial profit. A lot of stuff you might think is unorthodox, and it's different than how everybody else does it, but this is a different area. Oh, he used to call me uh, Boss Hog, and I used to call him Anus. And he'd say to me, that's chief Anus to you. <laughs> Nobody's sacred with him. I've been accused of being possibly a bigot, prejudiced, things like this. I grew up in a different era. You could say WAP, Polak, and nobody cared. Okay, round header, Polak. Right. Are you saying like a Protestant pain in the ass or what? <laughs> I, how's the Jew? If you want to make uh, ethnic jokes, and I don't really mean racial slurs, but I mean just an ethnic joke. What's the difference in a Jew and a canoe? The canoe will eventually tip someday. but. <laughs> You have to give it to everyone. No, the Italian and the black. Oh, okay. The African American, the difference is 100 miles of water. And if you're an equal opportunity bigot, nobody complains. And we have Mini Guinea Addy, the little Italian in the back. Because I'll call the Protestant wasps. I'll call them cross-burning Protestant bastards. So the Jewish person or the Catholic laughs. And everyone laughs about the jokes I say about the Pollock. So I mean, it really, everybody likes it. He only does it to people he knows can take it. And every, everything revolves around cars. It depends on what kind of car you're driving, whether you're really in or out. There goes a Prius, runs on strawberry douche. Gooks drive Impalas. And assholes drive BMWs, that's all. Do you know, he has questions to ask me. Some people think that I'm a racist. I don't believe it. No. But life is about laughing and smiling. Boy, if you're gonna have a sourpuss, Believe me, just read the paper, pick up the paper, what's going on in this world. Maybe we need a little bit of laughing, a little bit of fun. 
Dan Mooney is an old time police officer who instead of forcing the system would first try to take people under his wing. Yes, if you're a good citizen, you've been a good person, you make one mistake, we try to help you. I always said to myself, even at school, if I was in a position over someone, I would never push my weight around, which I didn't weigh what I weigh now, but. I think a lot of people are afraid to deal with some of the, with, with police sometimes. You'll be good or I'll get the cop after you. I mean, I've heard that with parents and little kids. Thanks, guys. Okay, see you later. But I think that the policeman has to look at the situation, especially a minor infraction, and see, have you done it yourself? What they did, is it funny? Can it be handled at what you call a local level instead of going to a magistrate or going to court on it? He might see a kid who's, who's had a little bit too much to drink. He'll drive him home. Somebody has trouble with a kid or family member. I know what it's like. I know what the crying at night is like. You would rather grab a kid and take him home than give him some sort of a, a, a ticket that would wind up on his record. If we didn't have Chief Mooney here, there would be a lot of kids in jail. They have one son that's gotten into some trouble in jail in a DUI that has been a jackass all his life, but I love him. This kid never robbed a bank or hurt anybody, but just a complete ass when it came to drinking beer and driving under suspension. Danny knows how to handle it perfectly without getting anybody all upset. When he's dealing with people, he establishes a rapport, even when it's in unpleasant circumstances. Afternoon. Yeah, what? Uh, what did I do? What did you do? You were about 15, 20 miles an hour over the speed limit. I, I you kind of got to take control of the situation when you get there. Sir, can I see your operator's license and owner's card? I don't even have them with me, to be honest with you. This isn't even my car. What you try to do is calm and diffuse the situation so nobody has a bad attitude if possible. Every time I go out, one of you bastard cops is trying to, here you go. There you go, that's got somebody's name on it. It's my cousin. What's your cousin's name? It's on the paper. Well, I want to give you a warning. I just think your attitude is a little snotty towards me, isn't it? I'm not the one who's taking time out of your day. If you want the person to have a bad attitude, I can make him have a bad attitude. Feel like a fucking razor for that beard? Get you in this town again. I'm gonna run your fat ass in. Do you understand? Get in your ugly fucking car. Get your fat ass out of town. You're actually really controlled. <laughs> I was really controlled. Yeah, I deal with douchebags like this all day. Do you? Yeah. When someone was that belligerent, would you ever like just take him in or? No, you can't take him in for being belligerent. He could curse at me, call him any names I want. Uh, now, if there's little children around or, you know, something like that, he shouldn't do that. Could be a little disorderly conduct, but we get a little abuse from people. Hopefully he'll remember, and maybe the next time he sees me, he's half decent about it. I don't know what the bug is up his ass, but with a size ass like that, it might be a big bug. Eat me! <laughs> Waverly in general, you know, of course, years ago was a haven for the, the wealthy out of Scranton, the coal barons or the steel barons or whatever they were, and had their summer homes up here. Of course, now it's, it's really built up. It's always been a, a quiet, nice little town. I think we're quite fortunate here, uh, the problems that we don't have. I've got a dead deer between uh, Hilltop Road and the Waverly Community House on 407. Can you give Ben out a call, see if they can uh, pick it up? Yeah, 10-4, Chief. As a policeman in a small town, it can be monotonous at times. Go see Mrs. Matthews, the dog died. Who? Jamie's mom? Oh, Daddy. no. Her dog died. She was all upset yesterday. Ah, oh, dear. Buddy. Poor buddy. If you're a policeman in Scranton, wilkes Bear, or some other big town, they see more in a day than I may see in a month. So what's going on? I don't know, see. Okay. Just saw Kenny and Ange. Yeah? I might see you over the weekend, then I'm going to be crapping around. Okay. Like I said, to me, it's almost the monotonous boredom of uh, patrolling around. As long as there's no problems, everyone's happy, me included. But at times, uh, it can be pretty lonesome. I've fortunately never had to shoot anyone. I am not a gun person. I don't really like guns. I don't carry a gun off duty. And many times I don't even wear my gun when I'm on patrol, which I should. 
I don't like to kill anything. The only time I ever had to shoot my gun was uh, normally to put down a poor deer. See that? What are you doing? You waiting for the nice weather? Stay off the road. Like a good girl, okay? Good girl. At 64 years old, it's getting to be a young man's job. You get a little tired of some of the calls. Maybe you get a little lazy compared to the young guys. And I can't run through a field like they can chasing a bunch of kids or a bank robber. It's time. I want to enjoy life, you know. People ask me if I have any regrets over the years. I kind of wish I paid more attention in school, went to college and became a brain surgeon or something. Other than that, no. I'm pretty happy with the way things turned out.